welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is my wonderful co-host, Court Winsett. Giddy up. <laughs> and with that, there's the opening bell. <laughs> We're excited to have you guys back. Episode 10. Episode 10. Woo! We have a goal in mind. We know how many of these we want to do, and uh, we're, we're getting closer and closer every and day. And we're done with 10. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and this is the last one. That's no. Goodbye. <laughs> no, okay. So this one we decided, let's talk about financial advisor. Yeah, what it we've is. been saying, hey, guys, we work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. We're financial advisors, but we really haven't described what exactly a financial advisor is or does. So we figured... Ten Might episodes well do in, it. it's probably a good time to, to 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 explain to you what it is that we do. I mean, you're already an expert on stocks, bonds, cash, hard assets, budgets, so you might as well at least know what we are. Yeah. So, bottom line, it for me, Katie. What is a what is a financial advisor? A professional who suggests and renders financial services to clients based on their financial situations. We we like to think of ourselves <laughs> as your wingman. Oh, yes, your wingman, your partner in crime, that person that's there for you. <laughs> your sidekick, yes, as it were. Guess what, guys? What we're going to do this week for our top five is we're going to do we're going to 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 list for you our top five favorite sidekicks or wingmen or whatever you want to call it, right hand man. Um, we're going to each give you five of our favorites of those from pop culture. And Katie, take it away. This was really hard. There's so many great ones out there, but uh, let, let's just start. Okay. Ducky from Pretty in Pink. Absolutely. John Hughes movies. I mean, they're just incredible. 100%. Ducky is the partner in crime, the best friend to Andy. He, You, you realize he's in love with her, but Absolutely. despite her going off and finding the popular good boy, he sticks by her side. He cheers her up. He's there for her. And at the end, they're still best friends. So... Everyone needs a ducky in their life. Yeah, yeah. Great movie. I mean, uh, what's 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 the guy's name that she ends up with? The actor? Bl- oh, what the the and name is Blaine. I don't know what the actor's Blaine. name now. What a name. Blaine. Because then the bad kind of villain guy in it Spader, ends up being a Boston. James Spader. Yeah, God, Boston Legal. He plays a giant tool in that, in that movie. <laughs> with his white suit. Oh, all. my gosh. Uh, yep. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> I, I really, honestly, I never got over his performance in that movie made me hate that character so much that everything I saw Spader in after that, I was like, oh man, that guy's a tool. See, it just made me want to have a ducky as a best friend. I mean, he was fabulous. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Donkey. Donkey. Donkey from Shrek. Okay, come on. Think about it. Shrek is such a cute little movie and Donkey, Donkey rescues Shrek. Well, sure. He needs him. But the thing is, what I like about this is that Donkey and Shrek are partners but Shrek gets a little annoyed by Donkey sometimes. But at the end of the day, he knows what Donkey's saying. He needs him. Yeah, yeah. He needs that partner. Drive them a little mad. But um, hey, you know, they hang out, swap stories. In the morning, they're making waffles. <laughs> making waffles. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Mini-Me. Mini-Me. Dr. Evil and Mini-Me. Vern Troyer. Yes, which, you know, uh, he passed away, which is so sad. But yeah. Think about it. Dr. Evil and Mini-Me. Best best duo ever. I mean, Mini-Me never talked, but it was one of those. He just, Dr. Evil knew he was there. He was more evil than him. He took care of his bidding for you him. You complete me. You, you complete, complete me. They had rap songs together, <laughs> you know, when they were doing their evil, when they were in jail. So, I mean, that that's a good little buddy there. Absolutely. Having a little Mini-Me. Fantastic. Yes. I, I approve of your list thus far. <laughs> okay, number four. This one's very close to my heart. Chewbacca. Chewbacca and Han Solo. Yes. So, uh, love Chewbacca. I mean, another one who you can't really understand what he's saying to Han, but Chewie was saved out of slavery Han by Han Solo and decided to live, leave his Wookiee life for him. Did he you see Solo? Here. Have yes. you watched Solo? I did. Mm. But so the reason, so when I met my husband the very first night, had had a couple of beverages and across to the bar, um... The music was loud, and I was hanging out with a friend, and I decided to do the Chewbacca noise, and the music stopped at that time. And so I joke that that's how I got my husband, was from my nerding out about Chewbacca. Chew. So, uh, Chewie, we're home. <laughs> Thanks for the sound effect, Cam. <laughs> and my last, and I know, Court, you're going to challenge me on this one. Mm-hmm. Alfred and Batman. I know the obvious choice is Robin and Batman. Yeah. 
I mean, Robin is, I mean, I'm sure he's not the original sidekick, but he is, He. I mean, when people mm. think of sidekicks, Robin has to be top of the mind. No, okay, Alfred was his legal guardian. Alfred is the one who keeps his secret. He's the one who encourages him, who takes care of him when he's hurt, who makes his bat suit, who keeps, like, he sweeps up the bat cave, like, all of it. Alfred is the ultimate, like, he's godfather sweet. person taking care of Batman. He sweeps up the bat cave. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody's got to do it. Okay, when you, when you let me just ask you, when you think of uh, of Alfred, which Alfred do you think of? Michael Caine. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Let's um, hear yours. Okay, so my number one, my my number one is uh, Xander Harris from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the oh, series. You love your Buffy. Yes, I do love my Buffy. No question about it. And Xander is the perfect combination of. Of, you know, uh, funny and, you know, goofy and doofus and, you know, what? I mean, he's, he's just, he's great. He's great. And um, there's a, there's a, there's an episode in season seven in the last season of the series where he explains to Dawn, he, he basically sums up his entire self in, 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 a, in a conversation that he has with Buffy's little sister. And he basically says, you know, Nobody ever, nobody ever notices me. It's, I, I, it's, it's really hard to be the guy who is not super powered to, next to all of these other people who are super powered. But that's that's basically what I do. But he obviously plays a crucial role. He's he he is there for every little bit of it. I mm-hmm. mean, and, and they couldn't they couldn't have survived without Sounds him. Sounds like great. a great wingman. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Okay, my next one is kind of a stretch, but uh, you're gonna let me have it because I, I, because I insist. So. My next one is Alexander Hamilton from the uh, from the play Hamilton, uh, also now oh. available on Disney Plus. <laughs> and uh, the reason I say Alexander Hamilton is because as I was I was listening to the soundtrack today, and I was listening to um, for the fiftieth time yes, today, uh, probably the fiftieth time at least, and. Um, I was listening to I don't know I can't remember what the 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 title of the song is. It's Here Comes the General. It's basically the song about. Um, uh, about Washington that introduces George Washington. And in the song, they say, here comes the general and his right-hand man. And they're referring to Hamilton when they talk about the general and his right-hand man. So I figure Hamilton... You just want to talk about Hamilton because you're living and breathing it We're right gonna now. We're going to do a whole episode about Hamilton. It's going to be great. No. As a matter of fact, actually, you know what? Hamilton fits with this podcast. I'm just saying we can work Hamilton into this podcast because of what he did with the whole national banking thing. He was like the original. So okay, moving on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> get ready for it. Okay. I think probably my number three is probably actually one of the most iconic sidekick slash right hand man slash wingman, whatever you want to call him, characters ever, ever, ever in the world. It's Samwise Gamgee. And I mean, it, I gotta agree. Yep. I mean, he, you know, he, he, he literally carries Frodo at points during that series. I mean, he is, uh, as performed in the movie or whether you're somebody who loved the books, the, the character is just, he is absolutely pivotal in the quest and in the accomplishment of the quest, uh, the destruction of the one ring. So you can't, I mean, you can't have any really definitive list of, of sidekicks and not talk about Sam. Um, my number four is John Watson of Sherlock Holmes fame. Now I specifically am referring to John Watts, Watson as played by, uh, Martin Freeman in the, uh, BBC series Sherlock, which was, uh, very recent, you know, in the past decade that it's come out. It's an amazing series. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch plays Sherlock. It's uh, it's modernized. It's it, the, the two of them, uh, Martin Freeman and Benedict Cumberbatch, Sherlock and Holmes, have an f- amazing relationship. I love it. Uh, I, I highly recommend it if you have not watched it. It's great. And I'll have to add uh, it to my list. Watson is a great character. And then finally, I'm going to double up on you. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to put two people in my last spot. But I can't. I couldn't really decide which one I like more. Actually, that's not true. If I had to come down to it, I, okay. So the the two people are are Ron and Hermione from from Harry Potter. And Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. So I absolutely love them uh, as as Harry's go to people, as as his his people. And I don't really think I don't. 
If I had to pick, I'd go with Hermione, but I'm not going to pick because I don't have to because I make up the rules as I go, and that's how I live. What? See, I like Bellatrix so strange. She was my girl. But she's A, evil, and C, she is... I like evil people, okay? (laughs) I always root for the villains. Like, why are they always the underdog? We need to flip this around. Okay, we're getting a little crazy here. (laughs) Sorry about the tangent, everybody. Let's get back to financial advisors what is a financial advisor i mean we gave them the the wikipedia dictionary at the beginning (laughs) but let's really dive into that okay so a financial advisor obviously is is somebody that uh wears three-piece suits with a a monocle over one eye you know and smokes cigars made out of other people's money and uh it's like a scrooge mcduck monopoly (laughs) what is this actually you i'm sitting here staring at scrooge mcduck right behind you on the bookshelf so i did but uh no obviously that's not that some people think that uh to go to a financial advisor to 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 work with a financial advisor, they need to have tons of money. That the financial advisor is, is somebody that only works with with people who have tons of money. Tons and that's, of wealth. That is not what a financial advisor is. It's not what a financial advisor does. No, uh, they're really they're your partner in crime. They're your your wingman. They're someone that you go to and you kind of explain to them, "Here's who I am. Here's who I want to be. Here's what I want to do. How can you help me?" get to my goals, meet my dreams, whatever it may be, and get me to a financial position that I want to be in. Yeah. So financial advisors accomplish this through several different things. I mean, when people think about a financial advisor, probably the first thing they're going to think of is investments. You know, mm-hmm. all of those things that we've been talking about, stocks, bonds, cash, you know, hard assets. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they think, oh, financial advisor, stock person, you know, you, you will buy me stocks. That's, that's not, that's not what, a, that's not all that a financial advisor yeah, there's does. There's so much more to it. It's yeah. helping you with your retirement, helping say for, you know, a kid to go to college or, if you're wanting to buy a house or buy a car, like they're there, they really are your life partners. And it's someone that's kind of your best friend, but it's your good influence best friend. It's someone that wants to hear what you want and they're going to help you make your dreams happen. They're not going to derail you. Like, I don't know, you may have a bad best friend that tries to derail you, <laughs> but they're the good guys. Right. They're so not they're... my villains that I like. They're, they're, they're your good, <laughs> solid Alfreds that are going to keep you on the track. Yeah. I mean, it, and so, you know, if you, if you think about it in those terms, if you think about it like that, you're looking at, you're, you're going to shop for your financial advisor because you need someone that you can build a relationship mm-hmm. with. Because this is a person that if you, if you use a financial advisor correctly, they are a person that can, can really be, you know, much more than just some sort of transactional service person to you. They can, they can really. It's a relationship, not yeah. a transaction. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so like what we want you to walk away from this podcast with is what is a financial advisor? When do you need one? And how do you know if they're good? How do you know if they're right? So let's back it up of kind of just the credentials that you have to have to call yourself a financial advisor. Okay. Back it up to credentials. Okay. So you have to pass some tests Mm -hmm. to, to, to be a financial advisor, to call yourself a financial advisor. You have to pass some tests and they're not easy tests. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them easy. Would you call them easy? Did you? No, they're not easy at all. They're not easy. Lots of studying, lots of going into it. And then when you pass these tests, it still doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you got a stamp of approval. You're going to be that financial okay. advisor everyone wants. You're, you're not approved. It just means, great, you pass these tests. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it basically, uh, okay, so I guess we should actually call out what the tests are. There, there, uh, there is a, most often when you talk to people that are in the financial advisory industry, you're going to hear uh, discussions of the Series 7. Mm-hmm. The series 63, 65, 66, one of those. Uh, sometimes you might hear somebody talk about the series six. Those are the those are the 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 licensing exams that are given by either there are two there are two groups that that govern financial advisors. There's the SEC. The Securities Exchange Commission. I was going to say, not football. <laughs> right. Because uh, I definitely, when I saw SEC, I was like, oh, cool, we're going to be associated with football. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. Nowhere near as exciting. Right. No. Uh, so there's there there's them, 
And then there is FINRA. That's F-I-N-R-A. It stands for Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. And really, it's it's the, the it's the Finra people that are the people that we we answer to. You know, we yeah. they're they're the ones that are that are monitoring us at least. Um, yeah. So you take these tests, and then you have to go through background check, fingerprinting, all of that, and they have to make sure that you're a good person. <laughs> and you take these tests to understand all or try to understand all the different craziness out there, all the stocks, the bonds, everything you possibly can encounter. Yeah. And so that's with Finra and SEC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you said, you know, they're who we talk to. We have a compliance. Hello, compliance team. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, we, um, okay. So I guess let's, let's go a little bit back, just a little bit okay. big, bigger picture. We, we have told you many times we work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. We're an independent financial advisory firm. Our boss, David Pickler, is a financial advisor that's been in the industry for 35 years, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, we are considered a branch office of a, a firm called Commonwealth. And uh, the, so you may you may hear someone say the, 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 the term broker dealer. Mm-hmm. You may not. You may never hear it. But um, that's that's how we refer to Commonwealth. They are our broker dealer. And um, effectively, Commonwealth is our is our partner. Yeah, basically, we, you know, when we when we invest our clients funds, we're 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 investing that money through through Commonwealth and and using a lot of their products as well. Yeah, I mean, there's not to get too nitty gritty, but it's when you look at different financial advisors, you've got large firms and those may be the ones that you see national ads talking about come and invest with us to mm-hmm. this. And those are national companies. They do. They handle everything all in house. They do it all. Whereas independent people like us. We have a partner in Commonwealth that helps us handle all of our operations so that, you know, we're making sure we're handling business correctly. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we've got like our compliance team at Commonwealth that yeah. they they listen to our podcast before you guys get it. And they yeah, give we us have that. to run everything past <laughs> them. So uh, somebody somebody at Commonwealth right now is, is listening to me say, hi, Commonwealth guys. <laughs> but what that tells you is that before we say anything to you guys, before we say anything to our clients, like. There's someone out there that's making sure that we're sending the right messages. We're not promising you anything. We're not telling you anything that's incorrect. We're trying to make sure that we're being very transparent so we can do the best for our clients. And what's interesting is, you know, we talk about these 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 exams that we've that we've passed, mm-hmm. these uh, or that we have to pass the 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 broker dealer that Commonwealth Financial Network, Commonwealth FN, Commonwealth. Uh, we talk about all of those things, but you know, there are people out there that are just calling themselves financial consultants, financial whatever they want to, mm-hmm. you know, there are there are financial advisors and then there are other things, I guess. <laughs> There's other people that may be someone at a bank or even I know insurance companies now are Technically, doing that. Technically banks are, they have to do with the financial things. Yeah, they have to do so. with financial things. And there's like banks. But even someone like who's uh, does finance at a car dealership could call themselves a financial consultant. And that's where it's different is, Mm -hmm. you know, where you have the line of financial advisors is they're really trying to look at your whole picture and figure out what's best for each individual client. Mm -hmm. Um, There are things called stockbrokers, which I know we don't talk about it as much now, but we I think we all picture the 80s, the the guys in the button downs with the braces standing there on the stock floor. Those are stockbrokers and those are not financial advisors. They're people who just execute those stock trades and all of those that we talked about eons ago that whatever that episode was about episode stocks. six <laughs> but those people are just in the business of court you call and say you want to buy this stock they input the order they're not gonna say well court should you really be Is spending this, that money good, because yeah. you're supposed to be buying a house or you're right. supposed to be paying for your kids college and that's where a good financial advisor really has your best interest at heart yeah. and wants to make sure it's the best move for you so that's kind of like what a financial advisor is when do you need one? Um, everybody needs one. I mean, really, it, not to toot my own horn or toot our own horns, <laughs> I guess. But, you know, a, a financial advisor, the earlier you get with a now. financial advisor. That's the answer. Yeah. Now. <laughs> the, the earlier you get with one, the, the, the more they will be able to help you over the, the course of your life, basically. 
as the way I can picture that you think about it, you go to a doctor. Hopefully you have a doctor. You go to a doctor every year and just to check up, you know, you may not be sick right now, but you have someone you're identified that if something goes wrong, they're there for you. They know your history. They know your blood work. They know whatever it needs to be. So you need a financial advisor who can really look at your whole story. But if it's you need a reason, it could be a big life change sure. or you've inherited money or you're losing money yeah, and inherited you're in debt. Money. I mean, you know, that that one of the things that, that that sort of goes hand in hand with financial advising is this the the idea of of uh, estate planning. And so what I used to like to say to people was in our p- particular business um we also do estate planning um and so we would we would basically we will pick up somebody and carry them from the time that they reach adulthood and are in a job and have money that they can actually you know invest and plan for up through up through basically the time that they 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 pass away mm-hmm. and and then turn into helping their heirs and then, handle exactly and so you 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 this whole thing is is starting your life going all the way through your life to the end of your life and then we will turn around and and help the next person that comes along because you you know they're they, they have this huge inheritance and they don't know what to do with it or they have this small inheritance and they don't know what to do with it or they you know whatever but another part of it is i know when we talked about the budget we talked a lot about how finances is a, a stressor in families and relationships and so someone like a financial advisor is that third party it's that person that can be impartial, unemotional. They can just hear the facts and they can give suggestions on what's going on. And it doesn't have to be a, well, we're picking your side or your side. You know, it doesn't have to cause fights with a couple or a family. It's just here is a professional opinion on how I think the best plan for you. And I know a lot of these episodes, we've talked about stocks. We've talked about bonds. We've talked about hard assets. And we've said if it's right for you. Mm-hmm. And that's what we mean with that is the financial advisor, we don't want to sit there and say, yes, everyone do this, because you that's can't. not right. You yeah, can't. You absolutely can't. You have to hear, because even if it may look like two people are identical, they're not. Everybody has a unique story. Everybody has unique ways of living life and what their dreams and goals are. And that's why we say now is when you need a financial advisor, because that person can sit there and help you reach your goals or get out of debt or really strive for that future that you really want. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I feel like I got like real like. Wow. My, yeah. I'm like, okay. Woo! Rise up. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I got real preachy. I got like goosebumps going. I'm Lord like, Whoa! Have mercy. I'm feeling inspired. <laughs> Let's go. The funny thing is like right in the middle of that, uh, you said something about identical and for whatever reason, I went to Identical Twins. Twins, that that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and and Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. <laughs> I couldn't. I was like, but wait, you're you're you missed it. You missed. We, I did a drive by. Yeah. And left you in the dust. I was dust. like, I was gonna throw in a. Oh man. <laughs> no, everybody's unique. <laughs> so we've kind of addressed on you know what a financial advisor is. When do you need one? So how do you know they're good? How do you know that they're not that, as you described early, that Scrooge McDuck or that crazy little creepy guy who's like, oh, yeah, come on, bring your money and let me take it. <laughs> Show me the money. You just took Jerry Maguire and made it real creepy. Please don't do that to my movie. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, it, it, I, it's a good question, but really I, I did, I did kind of touch on it right up at the very beginning. This mm-hmm. is a relationship that, that hopefully will last a, a very long time. And this is a person that can do a lot for you besides just recommend some stock to put your money in. They can really go deep into your, into, in, into your life and figure out what it is you need and how the best way to accomplish it. And that kind of relationship requires it's going to be different for each person not not every financial advisor is is exactly the same and not every financial advisor is necessarily going to match every person that that walks in through their door so i think i've mentioned on a couple of these that i actually have an event planning business that i did on the side just kind of have to you keep my that? i think so to keep my creativity <laughs> but one of the questions i get a lot is how there's you know how do i pick a vendor 
well, there's tons of people that can hold a camera and take a great picture. There's tons of people that can deliver great food. But how I have built my list of vendors that I like working with and suggest to brides is those people that deliver great quality and great products, but those that I know if there's something that goes wrong, if there's some some kind of difficult issue that comes up, how do they shine? How do they act in that moment? And that's how my list is built is those that I know will get to know the bride, will get to know their story and really deliver and not just look at it as just another dollar coming in, another bride to handle. Right. So with that being said, it's when you're trying to find someone, you, you realize that you want to talk to somebody about your finances. You want to get that advisor. You have the opportunity to interview them and go in there with questions. Ask them, you know, how long have they been doing this? What are their beliefs? What, you know, who are I mean, their clients? It's, it's up to you, but... It, if I, if I'm being if, if if I'm being completely honest, if I walk into a financial advisor's office and I feel like they're interviewing me and trying to decide whether or not they're going to take me on as a mm-hmm. client, that's not the type of relationship that I want. Mm-hmm. I I want to be in the driver's seat. I want to be the one that's making the choice. And you know that so so I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to 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 pass some sort of bar to to be able to have a to be with the elite financial yeah. advisors that only take you know million dollar clients i'll be 100 percent transparent with you guys my dad's been in this business 35 36 years now and it was it's called pickler wealth advisors that he started about 15 years ago i kind of had the assumption wealth wealthy people mm-hmm. that they had to have a certain net worth and that's you know that's not necessarily true. Right. It's he's in the business of helping people, and so that's where when we're saying interview and finding that best fit, it's finding that financial advisor that fits you, someone who is willing to get to know you, know that personal story. But then don't be scared to walk in and say, "Well, how much do you charge? What are your fees?" Oh yeah, absolutely. That's I a mean, big that's thing. that's that's part of the question. That it, certainly, I would say. Nine out of ten, or maybe even ninety-nine out of a hundred people that come in to meet with us as uh, you know, as a potential advisor before they've decided mm-hmm. whether they're going to go with us or not, usually they're going to ask, "Okay, so what does this cost me?" Yeah, everyone wants to know what it costs and what they're getting. They, you as a client, wants to know what is your return on investment. Right. If you come to somebody, you want to know what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. And so you, you I, we're not going to go way deep into how you know how how you're charged, but effectively you have two different ways that that you you might be compensating your financial advisor. Mm-hmm. They are either earning a percentage of the amount of funds that you have invested with them, usually mm-hmm. you know on an on an annual basis. So it, it could be uh, it, that would be a fee based. Uh, relationship where they are, you know, if you have a hundred thousand dollars with them, then they get one percent or two percent or five percent. I don't know. Of uh, I don't want to put a specific number on it, but they get a percentage yeah. of that hundred thousand dollars every year. That's one way that that they could be earning money. The other way would be uh, transactional or commission based, and that is. You call them up and you say, I would like to buy this stock. And they say, okay, I will charge you this fee yep, to this, this, this amount of money to, to buy that stock for you. And that's, so it's either transactional, that, that commission base, mm-hmm. basically where they're, that they're, they're playing along with you, that yeah. they're invested with you, that if yeah. you bring this money in, they're doing a percentage that when you go up, you go down, they're, they're there with you. Well, they, yeah. so fee based, they, you know, they, they have a vested interest in making sure that you have as much money as possible to make sure that your money is growing because it's in, it's in their interest. If you have, yeah, more they get money, a pay grade if your money goes up yeah, and, you know, yeah. they take a pay cut if your money goes down or you, you know, you've got the, the opposite side of that where you basically, you know, they, if you're trading stocks, if you're a regular trader, then then and you want to buy and sell stocks a lot, and and you pay based on every single transaction that you make. That's that's the other way. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really pretty simple. Um, and you know which one is best for you is obviously going to d- determine a lot about where you're going to go. Yeah, you know? who you are, what you want to do, and where you want to be. Yeah. Um, the other part of it is there there is ways that you can kind of do investigative work before you go and talk to somebody. Obviously, in this day and age, most people have great marketing programs. They have websites. They have all those things. But there's also something called broker check. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you remember when we were talking earlier about FINRA. Mm-hmm. Um, the 
the the site broker check is 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 actually run by Finra and it's it's a site you can go to i mean just google broker check or just go to brokercheck.finra.org and you can type in the name of a financial advisor that you're that you're researching that you're mm-hmm. investigating and every financial advisor in the country that is licensed by Finra is going to be on that site and you will be able to pull up their name and see what sort of complaints they've had against them if they've had any if they yeah. you know how many they, tests they've taken yeah they how what licenses do they have what are they actually uh, allowed to do and um how long they've been in the industry how long they've worked for a particular company you know all of that stuff is is right there on broker check and you can you can find out a lot about a person yeah, just it's by like going the there. the resume for you to be able to look at it and see that financial advisor there's their finra gifted resume out there mm-hmm and this is not this is not like you know broker check is not like Wikipedia. You, financial advisor can't just go on there and put on there whatever he wants. This is Mm-mm. Finra updates this stuff based on based on the information that they have from 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 documents that you have to that you have to keep updated. Basically, it's, so so somebody couldn't hide if there had yeah. been a complaint on them. It would right. show up on this, and that's where it's the compliance like Commonwealth has for us and uh-huh. Finra. They're making sure that. If we're in this business that we keep honest and transparent, and so that's where something like this keeps someone honest and shows the potential clients or current clients what they really are and who they are. Okay, I'm gonna so I'm gonna throw a big word at you, Katie. Uh-oh. Yeah. So uh, the word is fiduciary. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so explain it to me, Lucy. <laughs> so, so fiduciary is is basically this. If if we have a Fiduciary. Okay, let me back up a little bit more. <laughs> there up. is a there's a regulation called Regulation BI or Regulation Best Interest. Best, yep. Uh, and basically, effectively, what this new regulation says to financial advisors is, you have a responsibility. You have a fiduciary responsibility to the your, to your clients to make sure that that the investments that you are putting them in are in their best interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, the word fiduciary basically means exactly what I just said. It basically, if you are, if you have a fiduciary responsibility, then you have a, a, an ongoing responsibility to keep the best interests of the person in mind. Yeah. So that adding to that, it's so a financial advisor, someone couldn't do something that they knew was going to make them a bunch of money, but wasn't exactly the best for their client. That's what it's saying is fiduciary responsibility to ultimately do what is best for that client, no matter if it's not necessarily the money maker for them. It's all about taking care of our people. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and, you know, if, if somebody's not taking that fiduciary responsibility, you know, if they're not, if they're if they're not taking it seriously, then if you go on broker check and, and look them up, they're probably going to crack that whip. <laughs> <laughs> Insert Give sound cam. <laughs> Crack that whip. A funny kind of thing. So when I was searching all these different elements about financial advisor, just to kind of help us with this podcast. Um, I, I know at the end of our podcast, Court always emphasizes that we're Pickler Wealth Advisors. That's with an O, not an E. Mm-hmm. And so I've always been curious, like, you know, what's the difference? I don't B do that o. because there's I don't do that because there's a difference. I just do it because I'm pedantic and I want to you, you want can to make spell sure the it's word either correct. way. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I looked it up. But some people have this notion in their head like, oh, an E means one thing or an O means another. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of a theater junkie. And I reference back to there's theater spelled R-E or E-R. Mm-hmm. And I think like back in the olden days, I always feel like R-E is more formal. But E-R is, you know, more common now. But so all we're saying. You're an like, Anglophile, basically. <laughs> you're like, oh, the British do it better. The British. <laughs> but so what we're saying with this is there is no difference between the O and the E when it comes to the spelling of advisor. Mm. So don't look at that and go, oh, well, they're fancy because they're an O or they're E or whatever it may be. Okay, Katie, let's let's wrap this up. So you ready for Bullseye? We are ready for Bullseye. Okay, my Bullseye. Do it. Get a financial advisor. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Don't look at it as something that is out of your reach, no matter what your financial status Do is, it. because everyone defines wealth differently. And so if you 
are interested, go and talk to somebody. But remember, you have the power. You can interview. And I've make got sh- the power. <laughs> you can interview and figure out that it's the right person and it's a good fit for you because you want it to be your your buddy. You want it to be your person that holds you to what you want to do and what your dreams are. So find that partner. Find somebody Make the trust. investment in yourself to find someone that can help you reach your goals and dreams. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good bullseye. What do I do now? Katie, you covered it all. Sorry. I, so I guess for my bullseye, I'm going to go back to, we, we discussed, we sort of touched on the regulation BI. And mm-hmm. I think that's, I think that's sort of a, a good, a good element to, to, to hit on, land on, finish on. And that is, what is a financial advisor? Well, regulation best interest basically now says that a, a financial advisor is someone who has a fiduciary responsibility to their clients. That is, a, 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 they are ethically required to to maintain a level of trust. You know, it, it, I don't mean to crash on your bullseye, but all I keep picturing is Jim Carrey and Liar Liar, and he had that whole wish on him that he could never tell a lie. His son wishes he can't tell a lie for exactly. his birthday. And the pen is red. The pen is blue. Oh, <laughs> the pen is royal blue. blue. <laughs> okay, so no. The <laughs> regulation BI is not a magic spell that that makes all financial advisors unable to lie. It, <laughs> it that, that you can you, that that is why it is important that you do your homework and mm-hmm. that you research and that you talk to someone because this is a relationship of trust. This is a person who is ethically required to look out for your best interests, but you need to make sure that you trust this person that you are building this relationship with to look out for your best interests. Absolutely. Um, do you want to be where you can see? Troubles are all the same. Oh. You want to go where everybody, everybody knows, knows your, your name. name. Yes. That's my bullseye. I'm sticking to it. And Katie, there's the closing bell. Ladies and gentlemen, you have made it through episode 10. What is a financial advisor? If you'd like to find out more about me and Katie, ask us a question, give us a comment about this episode or any of our episodes, or suggest a topic for an episode that you'd like to hear, you can check out our website, which is bullcastpodcast.com. And, uh, you know, there are ways you can communicate with us there. There's also Twitter. We've got Twitter. You, Our Twitter handle is at bullcastpodcast. Same for Instagram, at bullcastpodcast on Instagram. And also, we've mentioned a couple of times, we work at a financial advising firm known as Pickler Wealth Advisors, and you can find out more about us and our fantastic team and our boss, David Pickler, at picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not Not that there's anything special about (laughs) that. I feel like that's probably giving you enough to be going on with, as I say. You've got enough to be going on with. So for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Court. I'm Katie. And we are out of here.